Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Given the fact that Teenage Engineering brought Balenciaga marketing, Hermes pricing and Gucci style counterfeit to the world of music technology, one might forget that they also established a more affordable trend of doll as fast fashion. Today we are going to talk about EP133 KO2. This compact sampler and 80s tax consultant's best friend lookalike is based on one of TE's very own pocket operators and while its price tag seems to be missing another zero at the end, having how to repair it videos come out only days after its release is not the kind of innovation we had wished for. At the first glance even Reddit got sick of the pocket calculator jokes rather quickly, a shameless collection of satisfying sweet spots like a pressure sensitive ASMR numlock surprisingly usable internal speaker, smooth fader if it works, the most whimsical display since Mr. Game and Watch, and an overall NES meets MPC60 meets LEGO look with a twist of orange. Quite similar to its microscopic predecessor, samples can be played in one shot or key mode. The latter allowing for polyphonic and legato playback. There are dedicated level, pan, pitch and envelope parameters for every sound. And choke groups are well implemented. Sample selection is old school and I personally like the stock sounds which contain punchy drums. Well rounded basses. Nice acoustic instruments and 60s cartoon leftovers. There are four independent groups of up to 12 samples that let you craft patterns of up to 99 bars. These patterns can be recorded Diller style or using MPC like quantization. There's no repeat. Each group holds up to 99 patterns and a selection of patterns can be committed to a scene for playing arrangements in real time. Sampling from the internal microphone or a line source is convenient and there are basic sample preparation facilities. Let's say the built-in time-stretching option has a character of its own and I haven't found a way to perform SP404 style resampling. Bummer. Sample chopping is pretty rad though. <laughs> allows for all kinds of retro sampling tricks, but I'm not cuckoo enough to get something interesting out of the built-in looper. There's a web application for backups, loading sounds and general computer communication. Unfortunately, the machine doesn't offer USB audio. Implementation of FX is a mixed bag. While the punch-in effects known from the pocket operators are totally awesome, albeit a bit gimmicky. <laughs> There's only, only one send FX, FX slot, slot and the sends are linked to entire groups, so you can't treat sounds individually. The same limitations apply to the built-in filters, which can be assigned to the aforementioned fader. Speaking of, yes, fader gate is a thing, this particular unit works flawlessly though. Fader moves can be recorded. 
postmodern design goodness aside, the tech specs might be a bit too conservative for some. 64 megabytes of total sample memory seems to be the new normal, but a maximum sample length of 20 seconds and 6 voices of polyphony in stereo will certainly be a deal breaker for some. The instrument can be powered via USB or a set of AAA batteries, all connections are mini jack only and the manual is a bit too superficial for my taste. Thanks to Klangfarbe for lending me one of their floor models. Teenage Engineering knows how to kick off a hype train and the EP133 is no exception. Can it live up to the high expectations or is it yet another overpriced lifestyle gadget? You have already heard some of the stock sounds in today's intro tune. That's a bit odd but gets the job done. Somehow I wanna know how these tones fare in a groove box only jam. It's a tough one. While track building itself is easy, it took me a while to get used to the pattern and scene management of the instrument. I definitely hit the bus compressor a little too hard. Having only one cent FX is quite a limitation. Let's add a few other toys for increased spatial depth, higher polyphony count and flawless hipster flair. <laughs> shuffle feel. Again, I had to RTFM in order to get a grasp of the MIDI workflow, but adding more gear helps to deal with a meager polyphony. Up until now we have treated the instrument like a glorified Rompler groove box. Time to explore its classic sampler features with some relaxed chill beats from a rainy lo-fi universe of 90s work and study cool. <laughs> Frequent viewers of this show will know that I'm not a teenage engineering disciple, but I have to admit that KO2 is a respectable dollar centerpiece with great sound quality and an interesting set of features. Sure, the bureaucratic workflow in combination with ridiculous technical limitations won't be to everyone's taste and I'd be hesitant to use the machine in a live performance given the much discussed build quality issues, but I found it to be an inspiring track starter and fun toy in the best sense of the word. I was asking myself if there is any obsolete technology TE hasn't used as a blueprint for their product designs. An old Casio? Check. Drug tests? Check. A gang of murder dolls? Check. And of course, pocket calculators in all colors and sizes. How about a proper 80s analog synth keyboard? Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.